Good evening and welcome to this, the annual meeting of Rother District Council. I'm Councillor Brian Drayson, Chair of the Council. This meeting is being held remotely and is being live streamed via YouTube. The recording of this meeting will be available afterwards on our website. All members and officers are reminded to put their mobile phones on silent if they have one near them and to both switch off their cameras and mute their microphones when not speaking as this will reduce pressure on the bandwidth and any distractions, feedback or background noise. When called upon to speak, members and officers should turn on their cameras and unmute their microphones. Please be aware that there can be a time delay of around five seconds before the person who wishes to speak appears on the screen. Group leaders and senior officers are asked to leave their cameras on throughout the meeting in the hope that this will give the public watching via YouTube a better experience. I will now ask the Democratic Services Manager to conduct a roll call to check that all members who are expected are present. When your name is called, please unmute your microphone if you haven't already done so in anticipation before confirming that you are present and connected. Thank you, Mrs. Cooper. Councillor John Barnes. Present. Councillor Mary Barnes. Present. Councillor Bayliss. Present. Councillor Bird. Present. Councillor Brewerton. Present. Councillor Brown. Present. Councillor Byrne. Present. Councillor Carroll. Present. Councillor Clark. Present. Councillor Coleman. Present. Councillor Mrs Cook. Present. Councillor Cortell. Present. Councillor Curtis. Present. Councillor Dixon. Present. Councillor Drayston. Present. Councillor Mrs Earl Williams. Councillor Mrs Earl Williams. Councillor Errington. Present. Councillor Field. Present. Councillor Ganley. Present. Councillor Gray. Present. Councillor Harmer. Present. Councillor Johnson. Present. Councillor Mrs Kirby Green. Present. Councillor Langlands. Present. Councillor Maidley. Present. Councillor Maynard. Present. Councillor Mia. Present. Councillor Mooney. Present. Councillor Norton. Present. Councillor Oliver. Present. Councillor Osborne. Present. Councillor Proshak. Present. Councillor Stevens. Present. Councillor Thomas. Present. Councillor Tempe. Present. Councillor Vinehall. Present. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Lisa. Officers joining us this, this evening are Mr. Malcolm Johnston, Chief Executive, and Mr. Robin Bennard, Assistant Director of Resources. And we have Mrs. Lisa Cooper from the Democratic Services Manager and Monitoring Officer. We also have Claire Fletcher and James Waite from our Digital Transformation Team looking after the YouTube broadcast. Any members wishing to speak should indicate this, please, by typing in the chat facility the purpose of their speaking, for example, question, speak, move or second. Officers wishing to respond to members' questions, please type interject in the same way. The chat facility is persistent in that it cannot be deleted and any inappropriate use would be deemed as a potential code of conduct matter. It is a requirement that all members will have read the paperwork published on the website. Members are reminded not to press leave meeting if you need to leave the room. Just remember to make sure that your cameras and microphones remain switched off. And so on to apologies for absence. Have we any, please, Mr. Cooper? Yes, Chairman, just from Councillor Gia Wan. Thank you. I will now hand over to the Vice Chair, Councillor Cathy Harmer, who will conduct the next agenda item. <coughs> Councillor Harmer. Thank you, Chair. Um, could I have nominations for the position of Chairman of the Council, please? 
Chair. Richard Thomas, Councillor Thomas. Yeah. Uh, I propose, and I'm sure it will be a popular choice, Councillor Brian Drayson as to be re-elected as Chairman of the Council. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Do we have a second? Yes, thank you, Chairman. I'm more than happy to second the appointment of Councillor Brian Drayson. Thank you, Councillor Byrne. And do we have any other nominations? I take that as a no. So I congratulate Councillor Drayson on um, being the new Chairman of Rother and congratulate him also on what superb year he's already had and wish him the very best in the forthcoming year. Thank you, Councillor Harmer. Uh, agenda item five we're up to now, where I will read uh, and sign the declaration of acceptance of office. I will sign this on my next visit to uh, the town hall. I, Brian John Drayson, having been re-elected to the office of Chairman of Council of Rother District Council, declare that I shall take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. Before moving on, I'd like to thank all of you for placing your trust in me for a further year. Having experienced a, a civic year like no other, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to experience a more traditional one in the coming year. Fingers crossed. At least I hope that's the reason why, and it's not because you want me to keep going until I get it right. So uh, thank you to one and all. I'm now moving on to agenda item seven, nominations for vice chair. Could I have a nominations please for the appointment of vice chairman of the council? Uh, Councillor Cook. Thank you very much, Councillor Drayson. I would like to nominate Councillor Cathy Harmer to be vice chair for this forthcoming council year. Thank you. Anyone second that proposal? I, I would like to second Cathy Harmer. Thank you, Councillor Gray. Are there any other nominations for the Office of Vice Chair? Thank you. In that case, agenda item eight, confirmation of Vice Chair. As Councillor Harmer is the only nomination, she is duly reappointed as Vice Chairman of the Council 2021-22. Uh, agenda item nine, Councillor Harmer, please. Thank you, Chair, and I shall now read my declaration. I, Cathy Mary Harmer, having been elected to the office of Vice Chairman of Council of Rother District Council, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. And I'd like to add a special thanks for, again, entrusting me to um, be vice chair. And I look forward to supporting um, our chairman, Councillor Drayson. Thanks very much. Thank you, Councillor Hum. Members, as we move on to agenda item 11, I hope to keep the use of any roll call voting this evening to a minimum, but we'll see. Agenda item 11, um, before I seek confirmation to sign the minutes, you will have noticed there is an addendum on the minutes where I explained or a question was posed about two different figures that were given in an answer to the public question. Um, that is explained in that addendum and I did write to uh, Mr Bernard Brown and he accepted that explanation. Further, tonight, um, a minor inaccuracy has been pointed out to me with regard to an answer given to Mr Bernard Brown by Councillor Vinehall to his supplementary question. Whilst the minutes accurately reflect what was said, what was said was incorrect. The application and the appeal in relation to the Clavering Walk development in Bexhill was determined under this current administration and not to the former one, as was advised at this meeting. An addendum will be added to the minutes. With this addendum, do I have your approval to sign at a later date the minutes of the council meeting held on the 22nd of February 2021 as a correct record of the proceedings? 
If any members have any comments, please indicate in the chat. I move. Thank you. Thank you. In, in the absence of any objections or comments, I'll take this as confirmation of the minutes uh, and not to take a roll call vote. And I will sign them when I'm next at the town hall, which spookily is tomorrow morning. So thank you. Agenda item 12, by communications. Since our last meeting, we have passed a couple of milestones on the road to the new normal, although we are still online for this meeting, as we cannot legally all meet indoors. On a purely personal note, it means that I must wait until July before I can actually sit in the chair. On the 16th of March, I joined a meeting of Dallington Parish Council online, a village of just 300 residents with five parish councillors. I got a clear sense that all of the councillors are really engaged in their community. And I was pleased to learn that they contributed both to the review of planning and to the consultation on the corporate plan. I was, however, horrified to discover the average house price in Dallington and the plight faced by those who've grown up in the village and who would like to raise their own families there. The East Sussex County Council Chair held a virtual civic catch-up on the 18th of March. Rother was fully represented, represented with me and the Mayors of Battle, Bexhill and Rye in attendance. We were given a presentation on a uh, by the Sussex NHS Foundation Trust, mainly around COVID and the effects of the lockdowns on people's mental health and how employers and line managers can assist. And we also had a short presentation from the East Sussex County Council external, external fundraiser on how charities and other bodies can perhaps fill any gaps in their funding. On Friday the 2nd of April, I was invited by Councillor Langlands, the Mayor of Bex Hill, to attend the dedication ceremony for the Tree of Hope on Bexhill Seafront, adjacent to the World War I Tommies and the War Memorial. The tree, designed by Mr Langlands and built by local people from donated items, remembers the passing of those loved ones lost during the pandemic, rather than because of it, and to promote a, promote a future of hope. Our RDC contractors, Ivy Verdi, also planted rosemary bushes in the surrounding gardens. Perhaps revealing my lack of a classic education, I hadn't realised the significance of this until I was pointed in the direction of Shakespeare's Hamlet, where Ophelia lists, there's rosemary, that's for remembrance. I should have paid more attention at school. On Thursday, the 8th of April, as a member of a local environment group called Strandliners, I attended one of the organised litter picks around the mouth of the River Rother in Rye Harbour. I followed this up on Saturday the 17th of April, both as a volunteer and having been invited as chair of the council uh, by attending a warehouse in Rye Harbour, where the group began the process of unloading and logging the items found. In nine two-hour sessions involving six volunteers per, per session, over 750 kilograms of rubbish have been taken from the strand line. And in a further six sessions, this has now been sorted into different categories and even into the different types of plastic. It was quite an eye opener. Later that day, Saturday, the 17th of April, I was joined by the Mayor of Bexhill and four members of Bexhill's Royal British Legion on the steps of the town hall at three o'clock for a minute's silence marking the start of the funeral of His Royal Highness the Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. I should also like to mention here that I did send a letter of condolence to Her Majesty on behalf of the Council, which has been acknowledged. Members will know that Councillor Hart stood down from the Council following her election as an MP, as the MP for Hastings and Rye. I would like to thank her for her service on behalf of the residents of Eastern Rother and wish her well in her endeavours as an MP. I look forward to welcoming her successor after Thursday's by-election. I have uh, one last item to cover in my communications. As we take part in what is probably our last wholly virtual meeting, 
I want to pay tribute to our staff within democratic services in getting us successfully through the minefield that is remote meetings. Lisa Cooper, Julie Hollands, Louise Hollingsworth and Eleanor Evans have interpreted and dealt with the impact of the Coronavirus Act 2020 on our various meetings with diligence and common sense. Through their work, supported by others in the IT and the digital transformation departments, we have, I believe, presented our residents with an excellent alternative to geographically based meetings. And with the cooperation of you members throughout, we have acquitted ourselves very well indeed. I close by offering my best wishes to all those standards and candidates in the various elections across Rother on Thursday. Thank you. Agenda item 13, I can confirm that in accordance with the current executive arrangements, Councillor Oliver is the leader of the council until May 2023. Agenda item 14, Deputy Leader of the Council. Councillor Oliver, please. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairman. And I would just like to add my congratulations to both yourself and Councillor Harmer in being uh, re-elected uh, for the position of Chair and Vice-Chair. Uh, I think that, uh, Brian, you've undertaken the duties in a very professional and fair manner over this last 12 months, which has been very, very difficult. Um, and I know that uh, Cathy is well versed to be able to step in should that be a, a situation in the future. So um, congratulations and thank you so much you. all that you have um, been able to um, uh, uh, complete as, as, as chairman of council. And I hope there will be some events that you will uh, be able to enjoy coming up in this next 12 months. Um, I would just like to confirm uh, that Councillor Projac has been appointed as Deputy Leader of the Council and I would take this opportunity of thanking Sue for all her support she's given me uh, as leader over the last 12 months along with other members of Cabinet. Um, but it's, it's been so useful and having such an experienced uh, deputy um, and thank you very much indeed and I'm delighted to confirm that appointment. Thank you Councillor Oliver. Agenda item 15, Members of the Cabinet. Councillor Oliver again, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, some may recall that in May 2019, um, rather than uh, implement the full 10 uh, members of Cabinet, it was decided that we would, uh, we would operate with eight. Um, we increased that last year as the pandemic, I believe, was going to force some additional duties and concerns for Cabinet. But I always felt that eight was the appropriate number to work with and the idea is to realign this with the restructuring of the service managers that have come into place recently. So the uh, actual um, members of cabinet are as per the report, uh, which I don't need to be able to read through. I think you can all see them there. Um, and I'm delighted to um, acknowledge the support that they've given me over this last 12 months, um, working with officers in which has been a most extraordinary period of council and we're not quite out of it all yet, but it's been a very challenging and satisfying year uh, to say the least. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Uh, it's you again, I'm afraid, for Agenda Item 16, Joint Waste and Recycling Committee. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm delighted to invite uh, both Councillors Projac and Field uh, to be appointed to the, as Council's representatives on the Joint Waste Committee and the Joint Waste and Recycling Committee with Councillors Bayliss and Byrne as substitutes. Uh, thank you. Agenda item 17, Cabinet Spokespersons and Member Champions. Um, Councillor Oliver, please. Uh, I'd like to confirm um, the the continuation of councillors Coleman, Clark and Thomas uh, and being reappointed as cabinet spokespersons, members, champions on young people, child poverty, age community and promoting livable neighbourhoods, uh, cycling, walking respectively. I'd like to feel that there will be great other opportunities to introduce uh, spokespersons or champions because I think this is an important way forward of getting members involved in the day to day needs of our residents, uh, looking at the services and, and needs that we can provide. Um, and I'm delighted at the contribution that they've made over this last 12 months. Uh, thank you, Councillor Oliver. Um, agenda item 18, the property investment panel. That's you again, I believe, Councillor Oliver. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, the property investment panel um, would comprise, as previously, councillors Bayliss, Curtis, Joanne, Mia, 
uh, myself and Dixon uh, in order to uh, look at any opportunities that are brought forward by officers in the forthcoming 12 months. Thank you. Uh, thank you for now. Um, agenda item 19, the establishment of committees as detailed in Appendix 1. Before I ask for a member to move and another to second this item, I'll invite Mr Johnston, our Chief Executive, to make a statement. Mr Johnston. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just to inform members, I've been notified this evening of a change in the political makeup of the Council. This will mean the allocation of seats will have to be recalculated. The matter of seat allocation therefore needs to be delegated to me as Chief Executive and I will discuss with the group leaders the new allocation and agree the names for each committee. I would um, to put that forward, Chairman, if, if, if that is agreeable to the Council. Uh, thank you. Um, before I ask someone perhaps to move and well, can someone move uh, Mr. Johnson's suggestion of delegation, please? I'll move. Was that Councillor Byrne? Yes, thank you, Brian. Thank you. Um, and seconded by Councillor Prochak. Yes, thank I'm you. I'm happy to second delegation. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's right, although this was not going to be much of a discussion i would think i should invite people to comment before we move on uh, does any councillor wish to make any observations or comment on this right in that case within the absence of that i do not tend to take a roll call vote on this and the matter is referred to mr johnson to liaise with group leaders and delegate committee members as appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Um, that concludes the structural procedural sections of the agenda. And now somewhat further on than I normally ask for them, we come to agenda item 20, disclosures of interest. Are there any disclosures by members of personal and disclosable pecuniary interest in matters on the agenda. Yes, if so, sorry. sorry. If so, please declare the nature of any such interest, whether members regard it personal interest as prejudicial under the codes of conduct. Sorry, was that Councillor Maynard? No, it's Councillor Brown. I do apologise. Oh, sorry. Um, I, Chairman, can I declare a personal interest in agenda item 22 as my wife has put in an application for the discretionary business restart grant scheme, please? Uh, thank you, Councillor Brown. Um, I thought this may happen and it may affect other councillors. So before the meeting, I uh, did check with Democratic Services. As the restart scheme is the subject of agenda item 22, and I'm advised that as the matter has already been decided and that the report this evening is for noting only, there is no need for any councillor to declare an interest in relation to this scheme as they will have no effect on the scheme. So if there were, thank you for bringing it up, Councillor Brown. Thank you. Uh, but if there's anybody else wanted to, uh, we're looking for anything other than the restart scheme. Uh, please, any disclosures? No, thank you. Members are reminded if you think of one before we start a particular item, please um, put it in the chat and I will pick it up. Thank you. So moving on to agenda item 21, to receive the report of the Cabinet on matters for determination by full council at its meeting on the 29th of March. I note that there were no recommendations to council arising from the meetings held on the 1st of March and the 8th of April. Councillor Oliver. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to move that the report of the meeting held on the 29th of March be approved and adopted. Thank you. A seconded? Seconded. Thank you, Councillor Prochak. I will now call over the reports. If members wish to reserve an item for discussion, could they please type the minute number in the chat facility as I go through? So meeting of the 29th of March, 2021, the purchase of accommodation for temporary use by homeless households, 
CB20-119. Nothing registered in chat, thank you. And the Financial Stability Programme, CB20-120. Uh, Councillor Dixon has called that matter over. So I move that the whole of the report, with the exception of that matter, be approved and adopted. Uh, Mrs Cooper. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, members, I should do a recorded vote. Please answer for, against or abstain. Councillor John Barnes. Four. Councillor Mary Barnes. Four. Councillor Bayliss. Four. Councillor Bird. Four. Councillor Brewerton. Four. Councillor Brown. Four. Councillor Byrne. Four. Councillor Carroll. Four. Councillor Clark. Four. Councillor Coleman. Four. Councillor Mrs Cook. Four. Councillor Cortell. Four. Councillor Curtis. Four. Councillor Dixon. Four. Councillor Drayson. Four. Councillor Mrs Earl Williams. Four. Councillor Errington. Four. Councillor Field. Four. Councillor Ganley. Four. Councillor Gray. Four. Councillor Harmer. Four. Councillor Johnson. Four. Councillor Mrs Kirby Green. Four. Councillor Langlands. Four. Councillor Maidley. Four. Councillor Maynard. Four. Councillor Mir. Four. Councillor Mooney. Four. Councillor Norton. Four. Councillor Oliver. Four. Councillor Osborne. Four. Councillor Proshak. Four. Councillor Stevens. Four. Councillor Thomas. Four. Councillor Tempe. Four. And Councillor Vinehall. Four. That's carried, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Thank you, members. And now to the reserve matter, the Financial Stability Programme. CB 2120. Councillor Dixon. Thank you very much, Chairman. And, and again, my congratulations on your deserved reappointment. Hopefully you'll be able to see some of the wonders of Rother in the next year rather than your sofa, which has been where it's been for the last year. Um, I'm pleased to report that the Financial Stability Board is progressing well. And despite what people may have heard, read or seen, uh, we're making good progress in achieving financial stability for the Council in light of the withdrawal of revenue grants from the for central government. Indeed, a paper on the protection of discretionary services from this council is in preparation and will be in, uh, reported to cabinet in due course. Um, I'd like to thank Robin and the team and all of the officers, the heads of service who have made this, uh, made this job quite easy. And in fact, uh, we're, going, we're going to uh, produce some very good results, I'm sure. Uh, that's all, thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Uh, any debate or comment? Councillor Barnes. John Barnes. Yes, I, I shall wait with interest the uh, first report of the Stability Board. I, I just wanted to protest. It's a very small point, uh, but can we please use the term devolution rather than devolvement to local councils? I don't believe that we should abuse the English language. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Barnes. I'm sure I will never write that word without having to think twice. But thank you. Um, was that noted, Councillor Dixon? I have absolutely no comment to make, Chairman. <laughs> thank you. Um, I don't think there's any further comments. So, unfortunately, it's been moved and seconded, but I believe I still have to put it to a vote. Uh, Mrs. Cooper, is that correct? Yes, Chairman, we need to agree uh, CB120 now. Thank you. If we could now put that to the vote. Thank you. Thank you, Members.
Councillor John Barnes. Hopefully subject to that amendment uh, for <laughs> Councillor Mary Barnes. For Councillor Bayliss. For Councillor Bird. For Councillor Brewerton. For Councillor Brown. For Councillor Byrne. With the same reservations as Councillor Barnes. For Councillor Carroll. For Councillor Clark. For Councillor Coleman. For Councillor Mrs. Cook. For Councillor Cortell. For Councillor Curtis. For Councillor Dixon. For Councillor Drayson. For Councillor Mrs. L. Williams. Agreeing with Councillor Barnes. For Councillor Errington. For Councillor Field. For Councillor Ganley. Oh, with the same reservation as Councillor Barnes. For Councillor Gray. For Councillor Harmer. For Councillor Johnson. For Councillor Mrs. Kirby Green. For Councillor Langlands. For Councillor Maidley. For Councillor Maynard. Four. Councillor Mia. Four. Councillor Mooney. Four. Councillor Norton. Four. Councillor Oliver. Four. Councillor Osborne. Four. Councillor Proshak. Four. Councillor Stevens. Four. Councillor Thomas. I've heard the English language and the motion four. Councillor Tempe. Four. Councillor Vinehall. Four. That's carried, Chairman. Thank you, Mrs. Cooper. Thank you, members. Agenda item 22 to receive the report of the Chief Executive in accordance with paragraph 17A of the Overview and Scrutiny Procedure Rules and paragraph 4 of the Budget and Policy Framework Procedure Rules of any urgent decisions taken at the Cabinet meetings held on the 1st and 29th of March and the 8th of April 2021. Councillor Oliver. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I would like to move the report of the Chief Executive be received. And seconded. Seconded. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Prochak. As this matter is simply for noting, I do not intend to take a roll call vote. You'll be pleased to learn. Agenda item 23 to receive the report of the Audit and Standards Committee on matters for determination by full council at this meeting held on the 22nd of March, 2021. In the absence of Councillor Giawan, Councillor Thomas, please. I move the acceptance of the report of the Audit and Standards Committee at its meeting of the 22nd of March, 2021. Thank you, seconded. It sounds like somebody was trying to. I'll second. I will. Chairman. Um, Councillor Maidley seconded. Thank you. I will now call over the report. Uh, if members to wish to reserve an item for discussion, could they please type a minute number in the chat facility? I have seen your comment already, Councillor Langlands. Thank you. So meeting of the 22nd of March 2021. Code of Conduct. AS20 stroke 44, that's been called over by Councillor Langlands. The Independent Person Recruitment, AS20 stroke 45. Risk Management Update, AS2046. And the Audit Independent Person Recruitment, AS2047. Thank you. Uh, as one matter has been called over, I move that the whole of the report, with the exception of the reserve minute, be approved and adopted. I'm afraid it's another roll call vote. Uh, Mrs. Cooper, please. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, members. Uh, Councillor John Barnes. 
Four. Councillor Mary Barnes. Four. Councillor Bayliss. Four. Councillor Bird. Four. Councillor Brewerton. Four. Councillor Brown. Four. Councillor Byrne. Four. Councillor Carroll. Four. Councillor Clark. Four. Councillor Coleman. Four. Councillor Mrs. Cook. Four. Councillor Cortell. Four. Councillor Curtis. Four. Councillor Dixon. Four. Councillor Drayson. Four. Councillor Mrs. O. Williams. Four. Councillor Errington. Four. Councillor Field. Four. Councillor Ganley. Four. Councillor Gray. Four. Councillor Harmer. Four. Councillor Johnson. Four. Councillor Mrs. Kirby Green. Four. Councillor Langlands. Four. Councillor Maidley. Four. Councillor Maynard. Four. Councillor Mia. Four. Councillor Mooney. Four. Councillor Norton. Four. Councillor Oliver. Four. Councillor Osborne. Four. Councillor Proshak. Four. Councillor Stevens. Four. Councillor Thomas. Four. Councillor Tempe. Four. Councillor Vinehall. Four. That's carried, Chairman. Thank you, Mrs Cooper. Thank you, Members. I shall now proceed to deal with the reserved minute, which is AS 2044, relating to the Code of Conduct. Councillor Langlands, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, it, again, I, uh, it's, a, it's a comment, really, more than anything, about the seven principles of public life on page 30. Um, I'm aware that these were written 25 years ago by Lord Noland and are described by leading governance as a timeless classic. But I would like to mention that the use of the word should for honesty, openness, selflessness and leadership is merely recommending those behaviours, where the use of the word must suggests it's an obligation or an unavoidable requirement. To say that holders of public office should be truthful and should take decisions in an open and transparent manner cannot and will not obtain the trust of the people they serve. Could I suggest that during the coming year we look at these seven principles and tailor them to what we would like to uphold as a council and possibly include a few more musts? Uh, thank you, Councillor Langlands. Um, it's, it's open for debate if anyone wishes to uh, comment on that or... Thank you. I, I did see some nodding heads, Councillor Langlands, and I'm sure you won't let us forget during the year. So, Certainly thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, Councillor John Barnes, is that in relation to this matter? Yes, it was uh, about how we're going to follow this up. Presumably, uh, we are going to ask, therefore, in the course of the year, the committee to actually look at this code of conduct again. I welcome the fact, incidentally, that it's now standard across the county. That will make it much easier for double-hatted members of which there may be one or two. Um, but clearly, if we are going to review it, we probably ought to task the committee with doing that. Yes, thank, uh, thank you, Councillor Barnes. Um, just a point of a clarity here now. Um, Mrs Cooper, if you can help me. Do we have to, do we formally refer it to them or do we leave it to uh, Councillor Lings to bring it up to the Audit and Standards Committee? Uh, Chairman, I think that the fact that I'm here as monitoring officer, I've, I've taken on board what members have said and I'll make sure that we recover that in the next review that we will bring forward this in the coming year. We'll certainly look at the code and take what that a, on board. 
What a perfect answer. Who expected that? Thank you very much, Mrs. Cooper. Unfortunately, though, we still have to put the reserve matter to a vote. So we're going to call on you again to do a, <laughs> another roll call vote. You need Thank the practice. You. <laughs> this might be the last one. So <laughs> thank you, Chairman. Uh, Councillor John Barnes. Four. Councillor Mary Barnes. Four. Councillor Bayliss. Four. Councillor Bird. Four. Councillor Brewerton. Four. Councillor Brown. Four. Councillor Byrne. Four. Councillor Carroll. Four. Councillor Clark. Four. Councillor Coleman. Four. Councillor Mrs. Cook. Four. Councillor Cortell. Four. Councillor Curtis. Four. Councillor Dixon. Four. Councillor Drayson. Four. Councillor Mrs. Earl Williams. Four. Councillor Errington. Four. Councillor Field. Four. Councillor Ganley. Four. Councillor Gray. Four. Councillor Harmer. Four. Councillor Johnson. Four. Councillor Mrs. Kirby Green. Four. Councillor Langlands. Four. Councillor Maidley. Four. Councillor Maynard. Four. Councillor Mia. Four. Councillor Mooney. Four. Councillor Norton. Four. Councillor Oliver. Four. Councillor Osborne. Four. Councillor Proshak. Four. Councillor Stevens. Four. Councillor Thomas. Councillor Thomas. Four. Councillor Tempe. Four. Councillor Vinehall. Four. That's carried, Chairman. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item 24, which is to receive the annual report of the Member Development Task Group. I see Councillor Projack has already asked also to speak on this. So, Councillor Projack, please. Thank you, Chairman. And also, can I congratulate you and Councillor Harmer for your reappointment? Thank you. Uh, you've done so well this last year, considering the, the difficulties. Um, the other the thing I'm um, noting is the report for member development. And first of all, I have to thank um, I have to thank the panel, the group, which is um, Councillor Bayliss, uh, Councillor Cook, Councillor Dixon, Councillor Oliver, uh, oh. Councillor Stevens, and Councillor Tempe, uh, but also Councillor Gray, who stood in for Councillor Dixon because of his work commitments, um, and she was a valuable uh, contributor to the work. Um, I also have to thank, as you've already done, uh, Democratic Services, uh, particularly oh. Julie Hollins, who has had, who who does organise the training meetings for us. Um, the training has sort of moved on to a different level, but mainly because not only that we're, we're in second year, but also because we, as you've said, had to move into virtual meetings. And it wasn't only the only the trainers who had to up their game, it was members. And I'm really proud of the members who uh, contributed, joined in, attended, um, uh, because and we were so well supported, particularly by Claire Fletcher. And as you said earlier, I think we actually have moved on hugely as a council, um, forced in a way by, by what's happened with, with virtual meetings. Um, and also the ever-changing ever challenges we face as a local authority. Things are moving on all the time. Um, so I congratulate the trainers. I congratulate Democratic Services and Julie, and particularly Ooh. congratulate members as well. Um, participation has been much better, I think, because we don't have to get out of our slippers. Um, and... And the topics we've covered have responded hugely, hugely to the demands on us and all sorts of government white papers coming out where we had to, to look at. Um, I think um, I'd just like to, uh, to draw your attention to the uh, league table, which is at the end of the report. 
um, which is on page 36 of your agenda. And uh, top of the league, top of the league is Councillor Fortell, um, quickly followed up by Councillor Gray, um, attended nearly 50 training sessions in the last year. Um, so you will see from that the numbers of training sessions members were able to able to join in. And the training demands are going to get more, because, but in a different way from when we had them right at the beginning. Uh, because because of the changes we, we're facing. And in a way, I mean, I, I don't think we have to give up virtual training uh, because it's not a decision-making uh, meeting. And for some of you, that might be welcome. For some of you, it won't be welcome. Um, but I'm sure we shall get back together anyway because of, of the government saying we have to. We have to. How we do that is another issue. And, 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 and good, it's not a member development issue. So again, thank you to all who've contributed to this work. I'm very proud of what we do in Rother in terms of member development. And thank you all for participating. Thank you. Thank you, Council Project. So Council Project moved the report. Do I have anyone to second it before I open it for debate? Uh, Councillor Cortell, was that you seconding or do you want to go for the debate? Um, I just wanted to ask a question of Council. Oh, right. I'll come back to you then. I, I need it seconding first. I will second. Oh, thank that you, Councillor Council Council Gray. Thank you. Uh, I now open it for debate and in the order of chat, uh, Councillor Harmer. Thank you, Chair. Uh, to echo um, a lot of what Councillor Project said. And sincere thanks. I think the training has been marvellous and I've been able to do an awful lot more of it because it's remote. In fact, the tree hour today, my hubby was um, privileged to be able to listen to it with me. So sincere thanks. And hopefully I'll know a lot more about trees and environmental issues this year. Um, I've had the luxury of being able to take part in my own kitchen. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hart. Councillor Oliver. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I, I would just like to uh, echo and support the comments that Councillor Project made. I, I just, I've been on the um, member training development group now since 2014, and, and I do really enjoy being on there. I think it's, it, we're actually shaping the uh, the, the um, uh, training uh, to members with regards to them being able to discharge their duties, um, and it equips us to deal with the changes that are out there, which are many. And I really would like to see that perhaps more of our members would support these sessions because it is very important. It's always something new to, to pick up. And I think that the group sessions that we have at training and the cross fertilization of ideas and interchange is very, very important. But um, uh, and my acknowledgement to the uh, Democratic Services team because they've done a tremendous job under very, very difficult conditions. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Councillor Albert. Councillor John Barnes. Yes, Chairman. Uh Actually, I will put right my error and congratulate you and Kathy on your re-election and hope you have a much more enjoyable year uh, this year. Um, I wanted really to urge uh, that while I don't think every training event uh, should be online, I do think actually we should learn uh, just how valuable it has been to be online. Uh, not forgetting uh, the enormous saving in travel and the carbon reduction uh, that has accompanied it. So it seems to me that we are getting better attendance and uh, we really need to keep this program going. So I, I think that's central and I support Councillor Prochak in what she said about that. There is a corollary, and I just hope we can mesh diaries a little better uh, for dual-hatted members and occasionally members who are actually representing this council on another body. It becomes very difficult if, in fact, there's a diary clash and uh, you've made the particular piece of training mandatory. So I think it's quite important that we get a little uh, sharper on some of the diary clashes. Um, and I think then you would find 
attendance will go up even further. Uh, but the training has been, I think, extremely useful, always excellent. And uh, I think online has made it a lot easier and saved an awful lot of money, time and carbon. Thank uh, you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Barnes. I saw Councillor Project nodding vigorously, so it's uh, got through. Uh, Councillor Cortell. Uh, first, may I add my congratulations to you, uh, Chair, upon your re-election and the excellent and very fair way you've chaired the Council in the past year. And can I also add my congratulations to Councillor Harmer on her re-election. Um, uh, the you know, question I had for Councillor Proshak, uh, I, I'd preface it by saying that I'm very impressed by the quality of the training. Um, uh, my question is about uh, participation. Can I have your assurance, Councillor Proshak, that wherever possible, uh, training will be available to all councillors and not just um, um, selected members. I can see Council Project searching for an unmute button, I'm sure. Council Project. Yes, thank you. You'd like me to, um, to, to answer. First of all, Council Cortell, you will recognise that actually some, some training is actually directed specifically at certain groups. Uh, so, for example, it might be um, overview and scrutiny, or it might be cabinet. Um, and in fact, there's one uh, uh, ongoing training, which is about the relationship of cabinet with officers and lead members, that sort of training. Um, I think the one you're referring to, though, is the recent carbon literacy training. The carbon literacy training, I was so grateful to Malcolm Johnson for enabling this because it meant it was quite... Um, it was quite expensive because the limit was at 30, 30 councillors plus, including, sorry, including uh, senior officers. And I was really, really pleased that senior officers could partake and participate in this. It was very heavy training. It was a whole day. And there is an opportunity, and I just started the homework today, there's an opportunity to get accreditation. It's the only course that gives accreditation and I would urge all those participants in th that training to actually do the homework. It does take time but it's a rather interesting exercise to do this. Um, so we chose those on training because they were on the climate change steering group, uh, because they were cabinet and we where people couldn't attend we tried to fit in replacements so a place wasn't wasted. And I do assure you, I do assure you that um, I've had a conversation with the chief executive and he has actually committed himself to taking forward this training to widen the um, the, the participation to all members. So um, if that is was your concern, I think it's the I think we will be we are very careful not to exclude members. But um, but thank you for your comments. Thank you. Lou. Thank you, Councillor Project. Councillor Stevens. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just want to say that I think the training is really good online. Um, I like going to the chamber, but I will say the training is excellent online, and I think it should, it should continue. Um, and yeah, that's it really. A lot more training. You can never stop learning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Jonathan Vinehall. Oh, thank you very much. I would just like to sort of add uh, my thanks for all the training. Uh, it's it's so impressive to see some people doing so much, even at 28 units. I feel like I haven't done enough. Uh, but uh, one thing I think we have done is make training a lot of our training courses available to the parishes. Uh, we started this with the planning last year so that uh, members of parish councils can attend. And, of course, doing it online has made it far easier because in the chamber, I think we restricted them to to perhaps one person, whereas online they can uh, they can probably have a few more people come along. It just makes it so much easier for uh, for everyone concerned. And I think that training is extended out to some of the other training courses as well. And that is very much appreciated by the parishes uh, who often can't afford the sort of training that that, uh, that we get. 
Thank you, Councillor Vinal. Councillor Coleman. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, first, and congratulations on your appointment and the appointment of Councillor Harmer, of course. And also congratulations to Councillor Cortell for a whopping 49 training sessions. That's quite quite impressive, actually. Um, I think my comment was just a, a, an appeal to, to the members who may be on that list of only being to one or two or three or four uh, training sessions to say, please do try and find some time to come along, especially whilst they're online, because you do learn so much. I think perhaps there are some members who have been on the council a while and aren't so sure that they, they're going to necessarily learn anything. But I think every single um, session, there's something to be gained and something to be learned. Um, uh, the only other thing I wanted to, to suggest, perhaps, uh, to the to the group uh, and to Councillor Proshak would, would be, uh, some members may know that I'm doing an open university degree course at the moment. And uh, when I miss uh, a video tutorial, they, they keep them online. And I'm just wondering if when we get our um, video uh, meetings, our, our video meetings on our website in whatever capacity that ends up being, whether there'd be an opportunity to hop onto that and, and store some training sessions online for members to view at their own sort of leisure, perhaps. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Coleman. Uh, Councillor Field, I have seen you, Councillor Harmer, don't panic. Yes, thank you, Chair. It is no secret that I really enjoy remote meetings and have absolutely no wish whatsoever to get back in my car and go and meet in anybody's council chamber. But I accept I might have to do that. Um, I really wanted to talk about training, though, which is excellent. Um, but Councillor Barnes is absolutely right. We do have often clashes of diaries. Um, it shouldn't be difficult to look across the municipal diaries of all the authorities where we might be double-hatted and, and, and coordinate. And the other thing, of course, is it may look like some of us haven't had much training, but we do often have the same training at other councils. So it isn't quite a fair picture here. So I wouldn't wish to, wish to condemn anybody for not doing anything when they might have done it somewhere else. But um, just please, 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 can we do what Councillor Barnes said and sort out the diaries because we'd all find it so much easier. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Field. Before I risk somebody shouting out point of order, because I'm going to let Councillor Harmer speak a second time, I was just going to break my own comment, which is, and please keep it facilitated online. Do not go to packages of trading. I suffered that many years in the police. Learning by computer is not the answer. Keep them facilitated, please, but, but by all means, keep them online. Thank you. Councillor Harmer. Oh, thank you, Chair. So sorry. I just wanted to make a quick point that as well as all the training on these lists, there's been an awful lot more training on Zoom or webinars, which I know I, you know, I bumped into lots of you guys out there have, have taken advantage of due to this. So the, it would have shot up quite a lot more with all the other formats of training. Yeah, thank you. Uh, again, much nodding from Councillor Approach. Thank you, Councillor Hammer. Uh, members, that's um, dried up the list on chat. As this uh, report was only for noting, I do not intend to take a roll call, much to Mrs Cooper's relief. And um, I'm going to move on to agenda item 25 to receive the annual report of the Overview and Scrutiny Committee submitted in accordance with Article 6 of the Constitution. And Councillor Osborne, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'll just quickly pass on my congratulations to yourself and Councillor Harmer for on, their, on your re-election um, and basically just uh, happy to move the uh, annual report of the scrut overview and scrutiny committee meetings um, for adoption or well just for noting I think so, uh, so there's no, no report but uh, no and just just to thank the members of the committee for their their uh, time and diligence this year uh, and thanks to Louise for for making it all work obviously um she also wrote the report i have to say that <laughs> <laughs> so um, <laughs> um but uh, but but no um and and that's it basically thanks to vicky cook for being an excellent vice chairman as well thank you who do you think writes my script perhaps Roswell. um <laughs> i just need that seconding please before i open it for debate uh councillor errington thank you 
So open for debate, and I see Councillor Field wishes to. Thank you, That's and all. I shall start with sins of omission. I forgot to congratulate both you and Councillor Harmer on your reappointment. So you have. You have I won't support. hold it against you. Thank and my you. Heart, and my heart felt good wishes. Um, I wanted also to thank Councillor Osborne for inviting me to overview and scrutiny for those reports which are relevant to my cabinet portfolio. And on the subject of that, I can only extend enormous thanks to those councillors who participated in the review of the environment strategy and also car parking. I've been involved with car parking for a very, very long time. Um, and I know what a difficult <laughs> and emotive and emotional subject it can be. And I think in both those review groups, we've got very clear recommendations. And I'd just like to thank Councillor Osborne and the review group chairs um, for their time and their contributions made my life a lot easier. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Field. Uh, any other comments? Again, then, as this matter is for noting only, I do not intend to take a roll call vote on it. And the conclusion of that item brings us to the end of this evening's annual meeting of Rother District Council. Thank you, members and officers, for your contributions. Thank you to those watching on YouTube. And once again, my best wishes go to all the candidates standing in the various elections across Rotherham Thursday. This meeting is now closed. Good night, everyone, and stay safe. Good night.